finalist uh, in Players' Cup 3. Uh, had a really long set in the finals there and, and showed a fantastic range of skills. But it's not just Players' Cups. Uh, top 8 at the Malmo Regionals, top 64 at Worlds, and top 64 at the EUIC in 2019 as well. So a player uh, who's always been kind of in and out. He is the highest seed in this one at seed number 3. 8-1 in Swiss to qualify for this. So... There's going to be some really tough decisions to make. There is that uh, Galarian Moltres as well, which has featured in previous Players' Cups very, very prominently. Uh, that Regielecki that we just saw put in an absolute shift. The Grimmsnarl, the Spectre, which we didn't quite see that much of in the previous game. And I'd be curious to see uh, how these trainers face their Registeels off and how they support them uh, as best as possible. Yeah, we saw how much work Registeel has put in for the day. So I'm excited to see how this shakes out, especially between these two players, of course. Being able to feature a player that we saw the last time around, always fantastic. Try to see if they can take down another player's cup. So that being said, let's start getting into this match to see how this is going to go down. And I'm hoping for a less wish this time around. But I don't know if I'm going to get my wish, but uh, I'm excited about this Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Blastoise when the Regieleki around is, is a bit of an <laughs> ask. It's a, it's a tough one. But if you have an answer to the Regieleki and you can uh, bring in the Blastoise, you know what? <laughs> We've both been bamboozled. There it is. Blastoise <laughs> right away in the lead for Marcus. A little scary. It is going to be facing down the Reggie Alecki from Leonardo next to the Spectre, but that Blastoise does get to hit the field with the Thunderous as its partner. Uh, I don't know how long we're going to see the Blastoise. Uh, as soon as the names come out, my German isn't uh, phenomenal. I'm not the, the best at it, but I, I recognize Turtok and I was like, hey, has he done it? <laughs> he, he has, and I think it's going to be in a, a very kind of unique position to try and, and play around, but I do want to see it put in some work. I do want to see it uh, Dynamax, or in this case, Gigantamax and, and show off uh, some of those really, really impactful moves. Yeah, it is just going to take the opportunity to protect, though, not wanting Dynamax or to leave itself in danger of this Reggie Alecki here. Um, so the Reggie Alecki is going to target down into this. Well, actually, Electroweb, sorry, I know you're talking about your German. My German's even worse. Um, but it is going to go for the Electroweb. Does get a speed drop onto that Thunderous here. Spectre. Not able to do much to that protected last waste, but does get a nice snarl, which just going to be chipping away slowly at this thunderous. Yeah, slow and steady, trying to win the race there for for Leonardo. Spread moves, lower stats is definitely one way to go about it with the combination snarl and electroweb potentially being very problematic if you can start racking up all of those uh, debuffs to your opponent essentially. So uh, definitely something to to think about a little bit, and, and we'll see exactly how this one shakes out. Um, I'm very curious to see uh, what this Blastoise is going to do because it looks like it should be in a terrible, terrible position, but uh, it, it's just going to sit and play the game. The Spectre not in the best position as itself. This Thunderous with the Prankster does get the opportunity to be going first, of course, with a priority. Thunder waving into the Spectre to bring its speed all the way down, but this Blastoise is finally vulnerable to a hit from this Reggie Lucky. Does gonna fire back though with a yawn into that slot and the Spectre just gonna be fully paralyzed for this turn. That's why the Pranks of Thunderous has come back. Being able to make sure that you can paralyze your opponents, they're not able to move first or they're not able to move at all. So, so important and this is kind of a a slow burn, I think, from, from Marcus being able to set up, uh, make sure his targeting is fine. Obviously, the Wakan Berry there, very, very important in making sure that he doesn't get completely knocked out by that Regieleki. But now he gets to play it a little bit safe, and it looks like he's going back for another Yawn. We've seen these kind of Yawn locks. It's a very soft lock, kind of control of the board uh, that we've seen a few times. And I'll be curious to see if, if he's able to get that down playing around with this Blastoise. Yes, but first, this... Thunderous is going to get the opportunity to go for a taunt onto the Spectre. Of course, the Spectre can be supportive or attacking, but taunt can really shut down its move pool. Reggie Alecki, though, going for a Volt Switch, so it's not looking to fall asleep this turn, and picking up a little bit of damage on the way out. Moltres is going to be joining the field in its place, but as you were saying, that Yawn Lock, as you'd call it, and <laughs> that last switch is getting the opportunity to hit into that slot again. Yeah, it can be really nasty and, and actually quite hard to play around in some cases because you don't want your Pokemon to stay in and, and fall asleep, but you also just don't want to be switching out every turn. And the Regieleki, kind of in the upper hand there, was able to deal damage and switch out. 
So that's a really nice kind of adaptation, but something like this Moltres, you know, can potentially stay on the field, can try and land some attacks, but then it'd be falling asleep. So um, Marcus really relying on the threat of the, the incoming sleep to control the game a little bit more for him. I think the Spectre uh, is doing a surprising amount, even though it's, it's just sat on the field kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, it's, it's still putting in a bit of a shift and, and trying to get some damage down. So uh, uh, I'm not, uh, not too unimpressed with what it's been going for, and, and yeah, the Moltres is just forced to, to keep leaving the field. Yeah, as well, the Shadow Ball from that last turn was unable to pick up the Blastoise, so the Blastoise gets to stick around, be annoying, and annoying it is, firing a huge attack off into the Reggie Lucky. It is going to be holding on, thanks to the help of the Sash, but it's definitely a humongous hit. This Spectre, though, going up for the Snarl, it is going to be cleaning up the Blastoise, get a nice little special attack boost to boot and just doing a little bit of chip onto it but thunderbolt coming out just to deal some chip back yeah and losing the blastoise there um a, a little bit tough to take i think for, for marcus but it did manage to get a big hydro cannon through that's actually uh, the move of choice for this blastoise so being able to to put that down yes it, it didn't dynamax we didn't get to see the gigantamax that we, we like to see from it but was able to at least put in a bit of a shift and, and cause a little bit of chaos on Leonardo's side. Oh, for sure. And now this Blanderus is nice and healthy hitting the field. And I can't say the same about the Pokemon on Leonardo's side here. So it is going to be an eerie impulse and coming out from this Thunderous into the Spectre slot, not wanting it to start getting boost and dealing with damage. And for its trouble, it is going to be taken out in return with a Volt Switch from that Regieleki. That slot keeps pivoting, it's like a revolving door there. And we're gonna get to see the Landorus from Leonardo actually coming out into the field and stack. Uh, the Landorus coming in very wide, so being able to intimidate, of course, uh, the opposing Landorus work through that white herb this is another team very very similar uh, to Tevzis that we saw earlier and on top of that marcus realizing landorus might be his win condition setting up a swords dance here uh, but the eerie impulses have been landing consistently over on the spectria and it's able to take the shadow ball pretty comfortably even after uh, the boost that it got at the end of the last turn now that was a big sword dance there not only the white herb making it so leonardo's landorus didn't get the Intimidate um, drop, but being able to get a attack boost to boot is huge. And Registeel is going to be joining the party. And we got to see a lot of this in the first game, this Registeel paired up next to this Landorus and just how it can really capitalize off of these boosts. And it's a little bit later in the game than we got to witness the first time around, but it's still a combination that we're going to be seeing again. It's a nice setup. It's a nice little pairing to say, you know what, I can provide what Registeel needs to make up the difference. Uh, both trainers though, going for the Dynamax. Later in the game, we saw it turns one in, in the earlier version of this team being played. Both trainers uh, kind of scoping out the field a little bit, buying themselves a little bit more time. And a really, really smart play from both of them. And it's gonna be Landorus on both sides. So uh, this kind of harkens back to that first game of the day where you, if you're gonna have a Landorus on your opponent's side of the field throwing out max airstreams, You've got to respond with your own, else you're just gonna you're gonna fall behind, and I think that's exactly um, what Leonardo is, is gonna try and do here. After Marcus already lands his first Big Max Airstream, and he gets a nice speed boost and gets to take out that Spectre's definitely positive. And the Registeel getting the opportunity to go before Leonardo's Landorus gets a nice Iron Defense boost, which. I mean, that's what it wants to be capitalizing off of. Leonardo getting the opportunity to finally fire back with the move of his own, though. Big Max Airstream going into the Landorus, unable to pick up the KO, but dealing a real good amount of damage. Well, Leonardo's Landorus fighting back, making sure that the Airstreams are matched. But of course, Marcus is just a little bit stronger. It's been able to get that sword stance in and is able to do a huge amount of damage. That said, Regieleki is very, very fast. I don't know if Landorus can, can catch it already. But the Regieleki really can't do very much damage to, to either the Registeel or the, uh, you know, the Landorus at all. So this could kind of just be a switch to, to buy a little bit of time, maybe just let it go down, let, let it distract a little bit while the Landorus on Leonardo's side uh, throws out another Max Airstream. Be curious to see um, how they decide to, to go with their, their max moves on this one. Are they just going to keep trading the airstreams or are they going to uh, kind of allow that one to to just fall by the wayside? I think if Marcus gets another max airstream, 
Which Registeel is going to be a problem. It's going to be very, very fast again and is, is going to be able to deal with something like that Moltres switching in, which isn't going to have any speed boosts. Yeah, and we get we did get to see that Moltres, but the Moltres would not appreciate sitting here either. So Reggie Lucky with one HP, gonna take its spot, is going to go for the Protect. Won't fare up against Landorus, but it would against a potential body press. And sure enough, Landorus from Marcus is gonna hit that airstream into Leonardo's Landorus and is dealing a good amount of damage. More importantly, getting that speed boost yet again. Landorus firing off its own airstream is going to be picking up this KO. So Leonardo is going to have um, potentially another turn to be going off of his max here, um, which is definitely valuable. And it's going to be this poor little, poor little Registeel against the world. But if anything can do it, it could be this Registeel. It's a lot to ask for the Registeel, but the body press, oh, heading into the protect there. Just not the right spot for it, I think. Even from that point on, you needed to make sure that the Registeel was, was picking up a knockout every single time. It's uh, looking over at the stats on the other side. I think Marcus knows how this one is going. A lot is being asked of brave little Registeel and, and is uh, certainly struggling a little bit to, to find those options. Buying some time though, landing the Protect. I mean, not landing, but just using the Protect. Uh, and just seeing the, the kind of big storm it's going to have to weather uh, over the next couple of turns. And to start that off will be a Max Quake from the Landorus. And despite a Protect and a Defense Boost, actually dealing a considerable amount of chip there through everything. So, I mean, that's the thing. You just need to keep chipping down this Registeel and getting it to a more reasonable part before it can do too much back. And sure, the Landorus and the Reggie Alecki on Leonardo's side are both extremely low, but this Reggie Seal can only target into one thing at a time. It doesn't really want to be hitting, getting hits in return. And this Registeel doesn't really have the upper hand on the speed either because of the trade of Max Airstreams. This Registeel still just sat in a kind of normal speed position against these two. The Landorus uh, setting up the Swords Dance over on Leonardo's side, so he's showing off that he can do it just as well as the Registeel can. Registeel does get to move, does get to tidy up the uh, Landorus with the body press. So being left alone uh, while the Landorus Swords Dance was fine, but once again, it's going to be another Thunderbolt and, and an attack from this incoming Moltres that should just be able to wrap up the game, I think, for Leonardo. Yeah, we got to see just how much Thunderbolt was doing. Of course, Iron Defense is all good and well to raise up the defense, but unless there is an Amnesia being run, there is nothing to help out the special defense. And with two special attackers left on Leonardo's side, it's definitely a big ask of this Registeel and just the amount of damage the Regieleki was able to do this time around. I don't think it can quite pull this one out despite being such a previously seen menace. Really well respected by Leonardo to know a little bit about how this team works and, and respect those plays. To look at the team and go, if you let Registeel set up and get an advantage, it can run away with the game. But I'm going to respect that. I'm going to match your speed boost, which is a huge factor in the Registeel matchup and, and just take you out immediately. And the Registeel is now forced into this horrible little corner where it has to try and protect and get that leftovers recovery as best it can. Uh, but it's just staring down two Pokemon on Leonardo's side that it should just be able to double up on it. Uh, of course, it does get to move before the Moltres. The Moltres are uh, not given any of the speed boosts uh, in this turn, but Regieleki does get to land an attack before uh, getting fouled. And sure enough, a huge Thunderbolt coming out. It is going to go down in return. I mean, it only had the one HP, but this Moltres, Moltres is such a strong Pokemon and is going to get the opportunity to go for a Ray Wrap here. It only had to do a little bit of damage and it is going to be taking down that Registeel. So Leonardo taking that 1-0 right off of the bat there, but really well played by both players. The late game Dynamax especially, um, both being perfectly timed to try and account a slot was definitely fantastic, but surely there's going to be adjustments. So let's hop into game two to see what is going to be done and maybe say goodbye to our little turtle friend there. Reggie Alecki is going to be coming back out next to that Spectre to be pressuring that potential lead. And no, that Blastoise is back next to the Thunderous. So Arca's feeling confident with this and maybe just saying it needs to be played a little differently, but still feeling confident in this lead. 
I, that's something that I think looking at it, he, he's going to have to make adaptations. The Wakan Berry is only there for one turn, and you're, you're facing down a Reggie Alecki, uh for one or two turns as well. So it's certainly looking like he was confident in his selection of four. We are going to be able to take a peep and see that, yes, he is uh, using the same four Pokemon, just needs to play the, the setup section of the game a little bit differently. I mean, we did see in the last best three, then the last match, how each trainer kept bringing the four Pokemon and it kept being like different. So, I mean, anything can happen, especially with now these players know a little bit about the first turn and how they can switch it up. And switch it up is truly happening is the Blastoise, instead of protecting, often to just swap in for this Landers, of course, Intimidate doesn't really matter, but it does offer a lot of pressure, especially onto this opposing Reggie Alecki. And this Spectre, fully susceptible to a Thunder Wave. So big move there. Reggie Alecki just going for that Electro Web, of course, not doing anything to the Landorus, but does at least drop the speed onto the Thunderous. That's uh, something a lot of... <laughs> A lot of changes to the speed here, and the Spectre being slow was, was pretty impactful actually in the previous game, so I was able to kind of help it out a little bit and, and really limit what the Spectre could do. Nice adaptation from Marcus, taking a lesson from game number one and, and saying, well, you're going to throw out the Electro Web, so I'll just bring in something that doesn't deal with that at all. Uh, it seems to be kind of all eyes on Spectre right now, lowering its speed, lowering its special attack with the Eerie Impulse, and I think there's going to have to be some options. Of course, the Reggie Alecki kind of forced out a little bit uh, because of the threat of the Earthquake that Landorus has for free and, and Leonardo trying to find uh, something a little more on the board a little bit earlier. For sure. At least Reggie Alecki getting a little bit of chip on the Landorus on its way out. Leonardo getting that chance to be changing up a little bit and is bringing out his own Landorus to match, of course. Intimidate, not going to matter. We saw the White Herb in the last game, but at least offering that little bit of pressure. Be interesting to see if the Spectre gets to go for anything this time around, considering it was fully paralyzed the last turn. Uh, and sure enough, Marcus just looking to set up, going for that Sword Sand. Spectre does get the opportunity to fire off a Shadow Ball, but after an Eerie Impulse, isn't going to be doing too much. That's surprisingly weak. Uh, I mean, it, uh, of course, the stats have been lowered, but I expected even a little bit more than that based on just how terrifying Spectre can be when it, it gets to counter away with games. We're looking right back at a similar situation that we had in game number one, though, uh, where Landorus and Landorus are facing each other and, and just have to trade these max airstreams, and it really comes down to um, who's able to capitalize. Looks like Leonardo doesn't want to play that game right now, though, and immediately uh, decides to get that Reggie Alecki back in. Thinks that might be more important in the, the next couple of turns. Yeah, Marcus, though, is going to look to capitalize. I mean, that Sword Sans boost definitely appreciated. So looking to try and capitalize off of that now and start putting some pressure on. I mean, the amount of pressure you can put within or, like an earlier game Dynamax is definitely nice, but Leonardo does have his saves later in the game. So Marcus is really going to have to make a lot of headway with this Pokemon now. Taunt coming out from the Thunderous into that Spectre, further limiting what it can do as a big Airstream comes out, catching the Regilecki on the swap in and bringing it all the way down to its sash. Regilecki right down to the sash, but we saw in game number one, just how much it was able to do while sitting on that sash. So it's certainly a really good item choice and there's definitely a discussion to be had not right now, but in future about the, the choice of item on Regilecki. And this is a good example of why people go with the focus sash. Uh, the game's playing out a little bit differently and, and just looking at it, I think Marcus is in a more comfortable position. He started up with his Airstream boost coming through and that's really going to help him out in the next couple of turns, especially if he wants to try and weave in this Blastoise at some point. Yeah, this Blastoise though, I mean, the Blastoise would be in a lot better position if this Reggie Alecki is taken out, and I mean, Marcus does have that opportunity. Last time the Registeel had targeted into the Reggie Alecki Protect, but being able to still have two turns of max is definitely nice, and we might see the tried and true swap into the Registeel here to start getting some speed boost so thunderous saying goodbye not too much you can do it it's already it's already done everything it can to the spectre let's be real it's thunder waved it it's eerie impulsed it not much it can do the registeel is going to eat up a pretty big thunderbolt from 
these Red Jaleki though, and the Spectre in return is eating up an even bigger airstream and is just going to be taken out. And uh, Marcus getting that setup down onto the Registeel, trying to make sure it's the fastest thing around. Really nice play. Getting the knockout on Spectre here too, um, just finally dealing with that Pokemon after bringing it to be very, very low impact throughout the course of the game. Um, so I like this early change into the the Dynamax Landorus and just being able to apply the pressure that way a whole lot better for Marcus and a little bit more aggressive than, than trying to buy time with the Yawn like we saw previously. For sure, and Landorus is going to be rejoining the party, of course, does get to utilize that Intimidate, but Marcus's Landorus is still sitting pretty at a plus one here and still has a full turn of max to be capitalizing off of, but Leonardo has the opportunity to still have all three turns of his max. It hasn't used uh, a Dynamax yet, so it could be the Landorus, uh, could be the potential fourth Pokemon in the back, which I would imagine is the Moltres again, but the problem is by the time he goes for it, there's already going to be three speed boosts over on Marcus's side, uh, so he could just be a little bit behind the curve to to try and, and truck on through this one. Uh, that said, Dynamax can always change things up, big impactful hits really, really quickly, and yeah, this is, this is the time get it going and I think start matching those speed boosts uh, important for Leonardo. Yeah, not wanting it, Marcus's Landers to run away with the game and having to match, and we saw it last time, just how important it was for the Landers to be matching the Airstream boost. So this one doesn't have the Sword Sands boost like Marcus's, but it, I mean, Landers is still such a strong Pokemon, can put in some heavy damage and is going to take a lot of damage from the Airstream, but still comfortably hanging on but it will get the opportunity to fire back and this Registeel is going to be taking another big Thunderbolt from this Regieleki, but it at least gets the trade here, goes for that body press for a whopping one HP and critical hit just for the, just for the memes there. Yeah, the critical hit, probably not the most impactful one we've seen, uh, but it does mean that he gets to, to finally uh, take the trade here and, and land uh, the, the knockout blow on the Regieleki, which has been keeping his Blastoise off the field for the duration of the game. Uh, Leonardo is, is really forced to, here into just playing around uh, this this Landorus. Uh, you know, his Landorus has to start matching those speed boosts. Of course, he has two more turns of Dynamax and Marcus's as soon as we see this fourth Pokemon is about to end. So, uh, really kind of well-controlled game here uh, from, from Marcus, uh, landing all three of your, your Max Airstreams. Really important, and now, you know, as long as he can keep these two on the field to use them for a little bit, should be in a great position. If there is a way for Leonardo to start cleaning up and looking at the board, both Pokemon are very, very low. This could turn really quickly, and I think Leonardo is just so comfortable with this, this back two as, as a combination. Uh, things could, could get uh, turned on their head very, very quickly here. Yeah, the Landers was able to put in a lot of work, but Unfortunately, the staggered max can definitely pose an issue, and the fact that the Landorus on the outer side can still go for the airstream, still get those spews, is definitely dangerous, and nothing is necessarily really safe to protect here. Marcus waiting until right in the last second to lock in, really debating what to be done here. Fortunately, Ooh. looks like a time out and yeah. going for that earthquake, not going to do anything on Leonardo's side. I mean, we we're just talking about how impactful this is going to be and a time out being even more impactful. Unfortunately, Lander has taken down its buddy, being taken down in return. And I mean, there's still two Pokemon in the back, but that is not a fantastic thing at all for Marcus. No, the earthquake is the top slot on his Landorus and, and that, you know, umming and ahhing can cost you in some of these games. Uh, this is getting really dangerous now as th that's the first speed boost down over onto the Moltres. Of course, you know, not taking any damage in that turn either because the Earthquake against two flying types just isn't the play you want to make. We are going to get another peep at the Blastoise, uh, but it's not going to be able to Dynamax. Uh, it's going to be in a, a very unique position and this Landorus on its last turn of Dynamax for Leonardo. Um, you know, really able to, to start putting in work, I think. Yeah, this is definitely a bad situation turned worse. I mean, with the Registeel and Landorus, they were low, but there is still stuff to be happened. But after that time out, I mean, Marcus is definitely put on the back foot here. And the fact that Leonardo still has a 
fully healthy Moltres, and Moltres is such a strong Pokemon by itself, and still another turn of Max is definitely unfortunate, and I mean, Leonardo has the opportunity with the speed to start running away with things, but Blastoise, just trying to stay safe, just trying to wait out the last turn of this Max, not wanting to be taking this Max Quake, and that is where this lander is going to be like attacking into, so at least it gets to stick around comfortably for next turn. Well, that was a big loss, even going back to that Earthquake turn where, you know what, those are your Pokemon that were set up with the speed boosts and the, the defense boosts, and those were the ones you needed to try and, and tidy up the game, but the now it very quickly turns where Leonardo is the one with the, the kind of ad advantageous speed positioning and is going to be looking to take advantage of that. Think about how bulky Moltres can be. I mean, it's a super effective hit, but it's just not going to be enough to, to take it out and fell it. It's still the fastest thing on the field and it's feeling pretty good about its position on the board now. Not only that, it has the speed boost, but the weakness policy, so it's all said and done as Marcus does look to be throwing this one over to Leonardo. So Leonardo is going to take it in a game in a 2-0. I can't help but wish that we got to see how it would play out minus a timeout because that was still a match. Yes.